Once upon a midnight dreary, while I pondered, weak and weary, over many a quaint and curious volume of forgotten lore, while I nodded, nearly napping, suddenly there came a tapping, as of someone gently rapping, rapping at my chamber door. Tis some visitor, I muttered, tapping at my chamber door, only this and nothing more. Ah, distinctly, I remember it was in the bleak December, and each separate dying ember wrought its ghost upon the floor. Eagerly I wished the morrow. Vainly I had sought to borrow from my books surcease of sorrow, sorrow for the lost Lenore, for the rare and radiant maiden whom the angels name Lenore, nameless here forevermore. And the silken, sad, uncertain rustling of each purple curtain thrilled me, filled me with fantastic terrors never felt before, so that now, to still the beating of my heart, I stood repeating, "'Tis some visitor entreating entrance at my chamber door, some late visitor entreating entrance at my chamber door. This it is, and nothing more. Lenore, come back to me, Lenore, come back to me. Ah! Oh. I brought you your goblet of warm milk, Father. Oh, <laughs> yes, thank you, my dear. She's been dead for over two years now, Father. You're young, Estelle. The young do not understand grief. To you, she was only a stepmother, but to me, she was... my life. I'm sorry. Good night. Good night, my dear.
on my soul. Do you want to come in? I believe it does. Well, then, come on. Who sent you to me? Are you some dark-winged messenger from beyond? Answer me, monster. Tell me truly. Shall I ever hold again that radiant maiden whom the angels call Lenore? How the hell should I know? What am I, a fortune teller? Ooh, I, I'm chilled to the bones. Why don't you give me some wine? Well, don't just stand there gaping at me. That voice, I... Will you give me some wine? Yes, yes. Here's some nice hot milk. Milk? How vomitable. Surely this is a dream. Hurry up, will you? There you are. What do you expect me to do? Hold it? With what? Oh, never mind. my soul. Never mind your soul. Start concentrating on getting me back to my rightful form. Your rightful form? Well, what do you think? I was born this way? Well, I... I have it. You were under an enchantment. Took you long enough to find that out. Let's get to work. Well, go ahead. Do something. But what? Restore me to my rightful form. I just don't know how. Oh, no. Well, you got some dried blood off a bat in the house? I beg your pardon? Bat's blood. Dried or evaporated bat's blood. No. How about some chainlings from a gallows bird? Jellied spiders. Rabbit slot. Dead man's hair. No, we don't keep those things in this house. We're vegetarians. And that calls himself a magician. Honestly, this is too much. Just a moment. Yes? Perhaps there are some of those staples down in my father's old laboratory. Well, don't you know? Oh, no, I haven't been down there since he died over... 20 years ago. Well, let's go and see. I don't care to remain like this for the rest of my life. Oh, these feathers each. Do you mean to say that these things you requested are going to turn you back into... What were you? Never mind. Come on. Let's go. to be down here again after all these years. Now, 
What is it you need? Dried bat's blood, chain links from a gallows bird, rabbit's lard, essence of... Slowly, slowly. One thing at a time, please. of troubled horse. No, no, put it back. What's that? I can't read it. Well, look inside then. Discuss it if you don't mind. You did say dead man's hair? Yes, that's one of the prime ingredients. Oh. All right, let's get on with it. Of it? You've got the jelly spiders in there. Yes. I have a white weasel. Yes. You didn't forget the dead man's hair. No. Well, let you do it then. Hand it over. You're not going to drink it. What did you think I was going to do? Take a bath in it? you remember me? We met at a sorcerer's convention in London several years ago. Oh, yes, yes, of course. <laughs> well, in any case, everything seems to have gone all right. Yes. <laughs> look, look what you did to me. <laughs> look what you did to me. What I did to you. <laughs> Yes, but it was your recipe. My recipe was right. There just wasn't enough of it. Well, then all I can do is to make some more of it. Well, then go make some more. All right, all right. Let me see now. Jellied spiders, yes. Here we are. Uh, uh, evaporated bat's blood. Or do you prefer dehydrated? I don't care. Okay, well. What a night. What a night! Oh dear, oh dear. What is it now? Dead man's hair. What about it? We're out of it. Well, go get some more then. More where? Where? In a graveyard. Where else? Enter a graveyard at this time of night to spoil the dead? No, you would rather see me go through life like this, would you? Oh no, of course not. Oh, I am sorry. Well, let's go to the graveyard. Oh, that won't be necessary. You see, my father is in the family crypt, and 
Well, I don't think Papa would mind if I took just a snip or two in a good cause. Why should he mind? Yes, you're right. <laughs> Let's be on our way. to find yourself in this awkward state. Oh, uh, it's a little embarrassing, but you've heard of Dr. Scarabus, of course. Dr. Scarabus? Heaven help us. Was he the one who did this to you? Who else? Well, how did it come about? Well, I, I invited myself to his castle for dinner. Of course, as a member of the Brotherhood of Magicians and Sorcerers. And Scalabus is the Grand Master. You have heard of the Brotherhood. Oh, yes. Yes. My father was its Grand Master for 27 years. With Scarabus, a rival for his power every moment of the time. I didn't know that. Yes, it's precisely because of the painful memories of those years that, well, that I never saw fit to join the Brotherhood. Tell me, if, if your father was Grand Master, then, then by direct line of ascension, you could claim the mastership for yourself. Oh, no, heaven forbid, no. No, I prefer to practice my magic <laughs> quietly at home. But you were telling me how it happened. Oh, it was the result of too much wine. I became abusive, and then I became critical of his abilities. Yes. And then I challenged him to a duel. Of magic? Well, the whole thing was completely unfair. I was just getting my magical equipment ready, and then all he did was a few gestures in the air with his hand. You mean he only used his hands? Yes, what of it? Oh, then his skill is far greater than I ever had dreamed of. Far greater? He was cheating. Oh, no. No, Dr. Bedlow. The magic by gesture of the hands is the most advanced sorcery. Oh, I don't agree with you at all. I can't agree. If I would have been sober, which I admit doesn't happen very often, but it would have been an entirely different story. Entirely different. And I'll get my revenge on him yet. You'll see. With all my heart, sir, I tell you, do not go back there. Hot place to keep clean, huh? Yes, I very seldom get down here. Oh. Uh, I suggest we better leave you, huh? Yes. Don't forget my hair. Come on, hurry up. little 
unexpected what happened down there. Huh? Yes, it was most unexpected. I, I just don't understand. Why should my father return from the dead and then tell me to beware of what? I wish I knew. I, 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 I wish I knew. Yes. Mm, that milk. Oh, I am sorry. In any case, I have to return to the castle of Dr. Scarabus tonight. Oh, no. Sir, please, I beg you, I implore you, do not go back there. But he has confiscated all my magical equipment, and I want revenge. But he is too powerful. Then come with me. No. No, I want nothing to do with him, nothing at all. No. What's the picture of that woman doing here? That woman? That woman, sir, was my wife. Left you, huh? Certainly not. Then what was she doing with Dr. Scarabus? What? But that's impossible, sir. She, she's been dead for over two years. I saw her there. When? This evening. No. Oh, no. I keep her here. But where else? May I? Oh, thank you. this evening. No. No, you saw someone else. It was her. No. That's not possible. Unless. Unless what? Unless Scarabus has gained control of her spirit. But why? To take his revenge on the house of Craven. No. This profanation must be ended. But th then you're coming with me? Yes, I must go with you. For the sake of Lenore's tormented soul. And don't forget my magical equipment. No. Oh. You rang, sir? Yes, Grimes. Prepare the coach for immediate departure. Yes, sir. And you're going to need something to protect you from the cold. No, I meant clothes. Oh. I, I despise black lately. Oh, yes, I'm sorry. What, what, what about this red one here? Well, it's a, a little gaudy, but... I like that. That's beautiful. Thank you. It's, it's a little long, isn't it? Yes, I, I'm sorry. Here, let's uh, try this. Yes, that's nice. Thank you. Sleeves are a little long, but... Yes, but I can hold them. It'll keep you warm. Yes. That's nice. I like that. You really should wear a hat. Oh, it's thank nice. you. That's very considerate yeah. of me. But, but I can't see through that. Well, that's, that's meant no... to be a scarf, do oh. you see? Oh, there. Yes. But I don't want to be... I don't want to be choked to death by a head. I'm sorry. Here, try this. Hmm? I don't like the material. Well, then this. That's nice. That that matches this green, doesn't yes. it? A little 
still too large, isn't it? Yes, yes, here, try this one. Well, really, anything will do. That's fine. Father? Oh, yes, my dear. You're going out at this hour? Yes, I am, my dear. Doctor. Oh, uh, Dr. Bedlow, this is my daughter, Estelle. Dr. Bedlow. Enchanté, ma chère. Where are you going, Father? Well, I can't tell you, Estelle. It's something dangerous, isn't it? Oh, no, 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 no. Shall we go, I'm doctor? going with you. No, you most certainly are but not. Father... Don't worry, my dear. Nothing too bad is going to happen. Just trust me. stable. How did I get in here? You don't remember coming in here? Last thing I remember was something burning at my head. Burning? Burning. Well, never mind, Grimes. It's not important. You go and prepare the carriage. What do you mean it's not important? He almost killed that us all. That will be all, Grimes. Yes, sir. You're letting him go? But can't you see he has no idea of what happened? Clearly he was the victim of some Diabolic mind control. Uh, that's nonsense. Scarabus? Scarabus? Yes, my dear. Yes, it is to his castle that I must go. I am going with you then. But, but she can't help us. But what other choice do I have? What if Scarabus should attack again? Well, I... I'd better get something, too, because I don't want to catch a cold. Oh. Hold this for me. Oh, this is my son, Rexford. This is Dr. Craven, and that's his daughter, which is Estelle. Mademoiselle Estelle. How oh, chante, ma chère. Doesn't he speak beautiful French? Yes. Now get out of here. But, Father, I've been looking for you. That's all right, but leave now, because we are in a hurry. What about Mother? What about her? Well, she wants you home. Why? I don't know, but she gave me strict, strict instructions that once I found you, not to let you out of my sight. Don't do that, Rexford. Dr. Bedlow, we must be on our way now. Yes, we are in a hurry. If you do that once more, I'll smash. 
punch you one right in the face. Dr. Bedlow, please. He's my son. Yes, I know, but we must go. Then I must go with you. Yes, certainly, certainly. Maybe, maybe you want to bring your friends with you. Maybe you want to have a family outing, huh? Bring your own mother. I'm sure Dr. Scarabus would be delighted to have your mother. Dr. Scarabus? Yes, that's where we're going, young sir. Hey, you're not going to let him drive. Well, I don't like to, but if he doesn't, who will? I'd be glad to drive, Well, sir. that's very nice of you, young man. Yeah, Grimes, you can stay here. Yes, sir. Estero. Father, may I ride up there? You know how ill it makes me to sit inside. Well, yes. Yes, of course. Goodbye, sir. That's a fine boy you have. <laughs> Does he favor his mother? She favors him. Oh. Thank you. I'll be glad to drive, sir. Idiot! What was that about your coachman before? Oh, well, uh, when he went out to the stable to prepare the coach, something happened to him. Father said that he was obviously the victim of some diabolical mind control. Whatever it was, the look on his face was hideous. His eyes glittering like those of a maniac. His lips drawn back, his teeth clenched tight, his breath harsh and rapid. Obviously, Scarabus's powers of magic are not confined within the, the walls of his castle. That's right.
to go in. You go ahead. There's no one here. this far to retreat at the first obstacle. <laughs> Dr. Scarabus, 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 Dr. Scarabus. dear? There's nothing to be afraid of. I bid you welcome, one and all. You are Dr. Craven, are you not? How happy I am to meet you after all these years. The son of Roderick Craven in my home at last. <laughs> Your father and I were great friends, you know. Friends? Ah, but, but, but who is this delightful creature? Well, she... No, 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 tell me nothing. Of course, I can see the lineage is clear. She is your daughter, Estelle, is she not? Yes. Thrice welcome to the home of Dr. Scarabus, my child. How enchanting you are. And this fine young fellow, surely not your son, dear doctor. I am Dr. Bedloe's son. I am sorry. Yes, the, the resemblance is quite uncanny. But, but what happy circumstance brings you to my home, dear doctor? The spirit of my late wife, sir. Spirit, sir? Late wife? I'm afraid I do not understand you. Dr. Bedloe has informed me that, very discreetly, that he saw my wife, Lenore, within these walls. Is it true, sir? Have you her soul in bondage? Dr. Crave, I am shocked. Truly shocked that you should harbor such an appalling thought about me. You have wounded me to the heart. But if it is not true, then why did you try to prevent our arrival? I did not try to prevent your arrival. But, sir, we saw... What are you doing? Summoning forth the truth. Lenore. Lenore. You rang, sir? That's not my... There is your spirit, sir. You may go. My apologies, Dr. Scarabus, for having wronged you. Oh, how can I express my sorrow at this gross misunderstanding? But pray, sir, join 
me at the table. A little food and wine and conversation. Let us not part on such a somber note. You will make this kindly gesture for an old man's sake? Yes, yes, of course, yes. Oh, my gratitude knows no bounds. Dr. Bedlow, young sir. On my right, Dr. Craven, if you will. Your lovely daughter next to you. Dr. Bedlow, on my left, if you please. All right. If you don't think I... I have forgotten what happened earlier this evening. But, sir, I hoped you had forgotten. That you turned me into a raven? A raven? But, sir, you tried to kill me. So what? Well, under the circumstances, I feel I behaved with great leniency. I knew that presently you would find some way to restore yourself, and lo, you have, and all is well again. And you didn't try to stop us from coming here, huh? Have I not yet convinced you of my sincerity? Come, eat, drink. Let me enjoy one full hour of fine conviviality with the son of my old friend. I'm sorry, sir, but my father never gave me the impression that you and he were anything but mortal enemies. Oh, doctor. Competitors, yes. Contestants, if you like, but enemies? No. I admired him more than any other man. Oh, I, I see. Yes. And yet it, well, it, it always appeared that... Ah, appeared. You and I of the occult dedication know only too well the deceptiveness of what appears to be. Yes, that is true. <laughs> that is quite true. But tell me now. Tell me something of your miraculous hand manipulations, of which I've heard such wondrous accounts and yet have never witnessed. Ah, but I have already seen that you too possess the, the gift of magic by... Uh, gesture. Oh, I have my humble means. <laughs> humble. Humble, he calls it. Turning people into birds. Are you still talking about that? The incident is closed. It is not. Where is my bag of magic equipment? In a safe place. Give it back to me. Gladly, Doctor, if you will but give me your promise not to... I promise nothing! I challenge you! Again? Dr. Bedlow. Shut your mouth! I know you. You are afraid to face me when I'm sober, huh? Are you sober? <laughs> sober enough to make a fool of you, you cheap faker, you. Father. Dr. Bedlow. That I did not hear. We will proceed with our present conversation. Yes, you are afraid, you miserable coward. Father, in the name of... Shut your mouth! Yes, afraid. Afraid of an honest duel in magic. You pitiful old goat. Enough, sir. You shriveled up Enough, old... sir. What am I to do? Well, can't you decide for yourself? stop him. I will do what I can, sir, but as you see, he seems bent upon revenge. Now! Father, you mustn't do this. Who are you to talk to me like that? Father, you are in no condition. Get to back to the table! Father, suppose he turns you into a raven. That's none of your business! Now, Vinny, Vigidi, Oh, you're defending yourself, you coward, huh? All right, take this. Do more to his little measy. Oh, 
you, you dirty old man. All right, I'll give you my Promethean magic. In that, I am unexcelled. Be easy, Arnie. Oh, I'll do my very best. Cedrum censio Carthaginem esse dilendam. shouldn't have tried for that particular experiment. It requires such enormous concentration. Oh, dear. Raspberry jam. Oh. If I might suggest, I think perhaps your daughter should lie down and rest a while, dear doctor. The shock of all this. We must leave now, Father. Leave? Oh, no, the storm is much too violent. Wait till morning, dear child, then leave. Refresh. Good night, Estelle. Keep your door locked. I will. Good night, Father. you'd scream. Is anything wrong? Don't be alarmed, but I'm afraid Dr. Scarab has killed my father. Killed him? Yes, during the dueling, I observed Dr. Scarab is making furtive gestures with his fingers. Now, we must speak to your father. But I already have. He trusts Dr. Scarab. We'll have to try it. It's locked. What'll we do? What are you doing? This ledge leads to your father's room. But you might be killed. I hope not.
Maintenant, make the weather so cold. Did you have to see him? Well, I was curious. I wanted to have a look at him as long as he was here. As long as you couldn't kill him on the way. Well, how was I to know that you wanted Erasmus here? You never tell me anything. Besides, I thought he might find out about me. Make it unpleasant to see him. Would you undo me, please? Ooh, your hands are so cold. I'm always fascinated by your utter lack of scruple. Well, you knew what you were getting. Did I ever pretend that I came here because of your charm? I came here because of your wealth and your power. And in return, I gave you my company. And if you insist on anything more, you will only succeed in boring me. Whereupon I shall leave you as I left Erasmus. Well, how, my darling treasure? By making me think that you have died? Hardly. Well, tell me, my precious viper. How did you know that he was coming here? Since, as you pointed out so petulantly, I never tell you anything. But I didn't at first. I only guessed. After you turned that dismal little fat man into a blackbird. <laughs> a raven, my love. Clever. I knew he wouldn't go for help to a magician who was in the Brotherhood. Of course. And that left only Dr. Craven. <laughs> How deftly nimble is your mind. Why were you so sure the Bedler would see a portrait of me in Erasmus's house? If you wanted Erasmus here, wasn't it a rather far-fetched way of bringing him here? After more than two years with me, dear Lenore, do you still think I make my plans in a far-fetched way, leave anything to chance? What do you mean? Come with me and see. against any of you. He already has. Has what? Just now, I almost killed myself coming from Miss Craven's room. She's locked in. What are you doing in a lady's room? Father, that's beside the point. I decide what's beside the point. All right, I went there to warn her, if you must know. Dr. Scarabus has imprisoned her. Imprisoned her? Then we must get her out. What about her father? Never mind, I take care of her father. You wait here, and as soon as Scarabus passes, get the girl out of her room and get her out of here. But what about you? Never mind me. Do as I tell you. For once in your life.
I think it's very rude to keep your guest waiting. his price? My? A double value. Superior magical knowledge, and through my death by lightning, freedom from overbearing women. Well worth the cost of being turned into an insignificant bird. To say nothing of luring Dr. Craven to me, don't forget that, my love. I can't imagine why you want him here. It's not Craven I want. It's his magic. Father, Father, we must leave. Leave? Yes, I've been locked in my room. Rexford had to let me out. What is it, Father? I saw Lenore. Please, my father said we had to go as soon as possible. Your father? Yes, he's still alive. His death was a trick. Now, please, we must go. Very well. Come along, Bedlow. You're wasting time. One moment. One moment. I don't think you quite appreciate what I went through. You should have warned me that feathers are a very inadequate protection for a poor raven in a cold December night. I don't even want to mention the pin feathers, they itch. But you should have warned me about the hawks. Hawks? Yes, the hawks. On my way over to Dr. Craven, I was attacked three times. And then when I got there, I had to discover he didn't even know how to turn me back into a man. A man? If I wouldn't have known the formula myself, I would still be a raven. I liked you better that way. Oh, I must find Dr. Bedlow. But, sir, he told me not to... Uh... And to top it all, I'm nearly chopped to pieces by that insane coachman and nearly killed by my own son. Have you quite finished? You have. It's time to separate Dr. Craven from his secrets. Are we going to have some torture? That won't be necessary. Oh. I have his daughter. Daughter. <laughs> that's, a, that's a very good idea. You really think so, do you? What are you going to do? Come. services to you, you ungrateful hellhound! Fear not. You will receive your just reward. Not, my dear. What with Dr. Scarabus having turned me into a statue and then binding me like this. I know I... I know I'm a disgrace. I had a somewhat stronger word in mind. But, son, you know that... that everything I tried in life, I was a failure. Only... only the day I joined the Brotherhood of... of magicians. Oh, I... I was the happiest man on earth. I still remember how happy I was. 
And then when, when Dr. Scarabus offered to teach me superior magical knowledge for luring Dr. Dr. Creighton here, I, I just couldn't resist that magnificent award. But Erasmus, believe me, with all my heart, I regret what I did to you. You are not alone in guilt, sir. I, too, have failed at the task of living. Oh, no. Oh, yes, yes. Instead of facing life, I turned my back on it. I know now why my father resisted Scarabus, because he knew that one cannot fight evil by hiding from it. Men like Scarabus thrive on the apathy of others. He's thrived on mine, and that offends me. By avoiding contact with the Brotherhood, I've given him freedom to commit his atrocities unopposed. You sure have. I'm sorry. Bravo, Erasmus. A splendid dissertation. You know. Well, you still look the same. So does the girl. You're alive. Very much alive. Yes, so I see. <laughs> that was someone else's body in the casket. I left you for Scarabus. No. What has Scarabus done to you? Are you under a spell? <laughs> spell? There's nothing but greed. Speak to me, Lenore. Speak to me, my beloved. Oh, Erasmus, you're still just as much a bore as ever. Well, now, gentlemen, I think we are ready to begin. I'm not ready. No, you disagree. Dr. Scarabus. I'll do anything you want. Just don't hurt me. Father. Come on, let me go. But what about the others? What others? I don't care what you do with them. Dr. Bedlam. I... I I don't care if you turn me into a raven. I, 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 I don't care if you send me out into the cold night. I don't care about the hawks and pin feathers, anything. Anything is better than death. Might be more amusing. You really don't care what happens to your friends? No, why should I? Such perfection of treachery fills me with admiration. Since Dr. Craven will never have the opportunity of helping you again. Thank you. Thank you. So farewell to Dr. Bedler as he flaps away to his well deserved oblivion. Doctor, we'll take your charming daughter outside. No! Father! What are you going to do? What are you going to do? I wonder. Ah! Let me go! Estelle! Let me go! Estelle! Scarabus, you maniac! Father! Oh! Oh! Somebody help me! Estelle! <laughs> Dr. Craven. Dear doctor, I offer you a choice. The secret of your hand manipulations or this against this. <clears throat> Don't tell him, Father. I'd rather die than have you tell him. Is that your wish too, dear doctor? You didn't run? I mean, fly away? Is that what you thought? What else was I supposed to think? All right, all right, never mind. You always did think like your mother. We're wasting time, Doctor. 
Perhaps the sight of your daughter's flesh being seared will clarify your thinking. Now do something right for a change. This is no answer. Is there an answer then, Dr. Scarabus? Yes. A duel to the death. Reconcile yourself to it, Doctor. One of us must perish. Very well, then. A duel to the death.
enough out of you. Yes, you're right, Estelle. We can go home now. Come along, young man. Erasmus, what is it? Oh, well, no, Erasmus, you don't understand. Scarab was having me under his control. I didn't know what I was doing. No, Erasmus, you can't do this to me. No. Ah, so the Grand Master's been defeated.
All right, darling, hold still. I'll attend to that for you now. Hold still. <gasps> well, look what you've done. You destroyed it. I'm afraid I just don't have it anymore. <sighs> Thank you, my dear. Good night, children. Uh, now that Scarabus is out of the way, we've got to make immediate plans for your assumption of the Grand Mastership. I'll be glad to act as your liaison, so, so you won't be bothered having to present your case personally to the Brotherhood. Later on, I'll be happy to assume the post of supernumerary secretary and dispenser. Dr. Bedlow. Yes? Do you really think that such treachery can be so easily forgiven and forgotten? Treachery? I saved all your lives. After having put them in jeopardy in the first place. That's beside the point. Very well. If that's the way you feel about it, kindly return me to my rightful form and I'll leave. Well, I'll, um, uh, I'll take it under advisement. Take it under advisement? Well, really? Who do you think you're talking to, anyway? Up. What's that? Up. Now, wait a minute, Erasmus. Up. Really? I never heard of such ingratitude in my entire life. It's getting so you can't trust anybody anymore. I'm just too sweet and gentle. That's my trouble. Dr. Bedlow. What is it? Shut your beak. Quoth the raven, nevermore.